Lakeland University takes over Gus Macker planning. Two arrests in Manitowoc drug investigation. Still time to get free ID for election. These stories and more coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Pfister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, September 15th, 2020. After a several day pause, positive test returns for COVID-19 are again on record at Kettle Moraine Correctional Institution. 64 more cases reported there on Wednesday raised the total within that population to 696. 72 other residents of Sheboygan County also received positive test returns since Tuesday, adding 136 to the total, which now stands at 3,118 cases since the coronavirus arrived here in this past March. 390 tests came back negative, setting the positive return rate at 25.85%. Of the new record, 552 cases now active within the county, 11 are hospitalized. Another 25 persons recovered from their bout with the disease, and Wisconsin added another 3,107 positive test returns for COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. With 11 1,435 negative results. The positive test return rate was 21.36%. 28 individuals have died of the disease since Monday's report, raising the death toll to 1,536. 153 persons were hospitalized with confirmed cases of COVID-19. As the latest hospital data published by the state DHS, which was current on Tuesday, the 13th, 959 persons were in hospitals around the state with confirmed cases of COVID-19. 243 of those were in the ICU, while another 239 persons were hospitalized for suspected, but as yet unconfirmed cases of COVID-19. 435 persons are on ventilators, and the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health in its daily update on Wednesday indicated that beginning on, on Monday, October 19th, the reporting of results and cases will be fully aligned with the Wisconsin State Department of Health Services. When local response began reporting its statistics in March, so-called county level data was not being reported by the state DHS. Now that the state is able to incorporate the county level data, a transition to a standard reporting format will be implemented. The major impact of this change would appear to be related to per test versus per person negative test results. Currently three negative tests done on the same person during the pandemic so far would be counted as three negative results when compiling the statistics. Under the new system, this would be a per person metric so that the three tests could count only as one negative person. This would avoid skewing the data due to the same persons being tested often. And this approach has been endorsed by John Hopkins University, which operates a COVID dashboard that has been or has become a go-to national resource on the pandemic. As the coronavirus pandemic continues spreading throughout the population, maintaining a continuum of education is becoming a shared trial among the county's school districts. The largest the Sheboygan Area School District announced Tuesday that classes would switch to being all virtual beginning next week due to the number of students and staff dealing with COVID-19. But they are not the only one nor the first, and the Sheboygan Falls School District had to move all the fifth through eighth grade classes to an all virtual model for the two week back in mid-September. Then last week, the Random Lake School District announced that it 
was moving to viral learning for all the students' level, grade levels beginning with the current week. Hoping to resume their in-person classes on Monday the 19th and also this past week, the Howards Grove district, or district informed parents of the need to transition from in-person classes to a hybrid model at the middle and high schools. While the adjusting the Northview campus to improve social distancing and reduce the need for contact, contract tracing. So far, no changes have been instituted in the Cedar Grove, Belgium, Oostburg, or Elkhart Lake, Glenbeulah districts. The popular annual event known as the Gus Macker Three on Three Basketball Tournament has a new planner launch Lakeland University's student run businesses. We'll begin the 2021 event that will be held at the Sheboygan's Harbor Center Marina on the July 31st and August 1st next year. This will be the 26th year in Sheboygan for the Macker, which had to be put off this year due to the pandemic. The Boys and Girls Clubs of Sheboygan County managed the tournament for its 25 years and the organization works to strengthen its services for area youth. The Lakeland University students who will now run it and will get invaluable experience that prepares them to create, develop, manage, and lead business ventures in the future. With assistance from the Wisconsin Department of Justice, the Department of Justice an investigation by the Manitowoc County Metro Drug Court resulted in the arrest of two persons they allege were distributing narcotics. Charges were filed and the bail hearing was held for Wednesday. 32-year-old Brianna Pitskill and 29-year-old Malachi Heitz, Heitzer, both of Mil or Manitowoc, According to reports, the Wisconsin DOJ observed the two meeting in Milwaukee with individuals consistent with drug trans transactions. Law enforcement then located the stop and stopped the vehicle on I-43 south of Manitowoc and found drug paraphernalia in the vehicle. When brought to the jail, discovered approximately 35 grams of methamphetamine, two grams of heroin, five grams of fentanyl in Pixville's clothing. She was charged with numerous drug-related violations, including delivery of Schedule two, Schedule 2 narcotics, keeping a drug house and possession with intent to deliver, while Hetzer was charged with being pretty to the crime, or party to the crimes, as well as the violating his parole. And finally, with November election just three weeks away, the Wisconsin Elections Commission is reminding voters that there is still time to get the required photo if they do not yet have one. At the same time, the BBB of Wisconsin is warning of identify, or identity thieves scamming people out of their personal information through fraudulent websites that look like the real deal. Wisconsin's chief election official, Megan Wolf, says that the most secure way to get visiting Wisconsin, the Department of Motor Vehicle Offices through the ID petition process, she advises that, what a, that you bring whatever identifying documents you have, like a birth certificate and proof of current address, but even if you do not have everything that you need for the DMV, will mail you your document with your photo that you can be used to vote. And while many DMV transactions can be done online, the Better Business Bureau of Wisconsin says some are trying to get their real ID or do other businesses with the DMV have been tricked out of money and personal data through the phony sites designed to look like the real thing they urge that you confirm that you are using a valid website by examining the web, web address. Secure sites start with an HTTPS instead of just HTTP. Lack of working 
phone number is another tip that you might be targeted by a scammer. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next time for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.